Let's talk about some of the details that were released by the parents of some of these victims before Brian Koberger was arrested. Hey everyone, it's Lucky with Unfiltered Lucky. And today I want to talk about some of the interviews that were conducted with the Gonzalez family just weeks after the Idaho four crimes occurred and before law enforcement had a suspect in custody. Now, watching the interviews with the Gonzalez family, it was pretty clear that they were very frustrated with law enforcement and the information that law enforcement was releasing. Now, law enforcement wasn't just withholding evidence and information from the public. They were also withholding information from the families of these victims. And the Gonsalves family was very clear about their frustrations with law enforcement and how this investigation was being conducted. Now, on November 20th, Steve and Christy Gonsalves do an interview with Fox News. And Steve Gonsalves says, there's so much evidence that it's going to take time to process it all. This wasn't like a pinpoint crime. This person was sloppy. He did whatever, and then he stops right after he starts to say whatever. And I believe that He stopped because he realized that he was about to maybe maybe release some information that shouldn't be out there. So basically, I believe that what he was about to say, and this is just my opinion, I'm not putting words in his mouth. I'm just saying, to me, it it seemed as, as though he was about to say he did whatever he wanted. Now, he also says that he made a mess. And there's a mess there. And law enforcement is going to have to go through all of this mess. So Steve Gonsalves is stressing that this was a very messy crime scene. That there was a lot of evidence left at this crime scene. And that law enforcement basically assured him that there's a ton of evidence in this crime scene that we're going through. And it's just going to take some time to get through all of this evidence. Now, Christy Gonsalves, uh, she confirms that, uh, that at this time, her and Steve have no idea whether they have DNA from this person or whether DNA was found at this crime scene. Now, she's saying that she that her and Steve Gonsalves have not been made aware of any DNA that was found at this crime scene, but we know that there was DNA found at this crime scene, but they hadn't made the Gonsalves family aware of this information uh, on November 20th, a week after these crimes. Now, one of the things that I picked up on when I was watching this interview was Kaylee's mom talks about Kaylee's new car. And she says that Kaylee was so excited about this new car And she wanted to go show Maddie her new car. And that's why she returned back to the King Road house. But they never mention about Kaylee going back to the King Road house to be a plus one for Dylan at a sorority house event. Which we've all heard that Kaylee was, that Dylan had invited Kaylee to come back to the house to go with her to a sorority event as her plus one. And that's something that is never mentioned in this interview. And it's actually never mentioned in any of the interviews with the Gonsalves family. So in this interview, they also reiterate that they believe that Jack, Kaylee's ex-boyfriend, is 1,000% innocent. They say that they've done their due diligence and that they do not believe that Kaylee's ex-boyfriend, Jack, was involved in any way whatsoever. 
So they want to reiterate in this interview that they're standing behind Jack and that if law enforcement is looking into Jack, then they're looking in the wrong place. So they talk a little bit about Kaylee's messages and the correspondence that was on her phone because they, you know, they, they, they say in the interview that they have shared passwords. So the Gonsalves family was able to go into Kaylee's phone and see what, what, her, what the correspondence was in, you know, the day leading up to these crimes. Now, Christy Gonsalves says that the correspondence was, you know, normal between Kaylee and Jack. Now, Jack wasn't answering his phone and he wasn't responding to Kaylee. So basically, the Gonsalves family is stating in this interview that as we see Kaylee, you know, on her phone in the Grub Truck video, um, she she basically reiterates that Kaylee was Kaylee wanted Jack to come over to the house that night. And that's what that's what those messages were about. Now, on November 23rd, Steve, Olivia and Olivia's brother all do an interview with CNN and there was some there was some statements that were made in this interview that uh caught my attention and basically uh this interview is where Olivia confirms that Kaylee and Maddie returned home at 1.56 a.m. She contradicts law enforcement because law enforcement is saying 1.45 a.m. But Olivia is, you know, she's correcting that. And she's saying that, no, she knows that Kaylee and Maddie returned home at tw- at 1.56 a.m. Now, you know, a, an 11 minute time difference, you know, it might seem small, but all of these little details matter, all, especially when, when you're talking about a timeline. So all of these little details matter. And Olivia Gonsalves understands that. Now, uh, Kaylee's mom states that she believes that the individual who took Kaylee's life was somebody who she was very familiar with and was somebody who knew Kaylee well. So at this time, Christy Gonsalves believes that Kaylee's life was taken by somebody who she knew and by somebody who knew her well. Now, this is where Steve claims that he doesn't feel... uh, like law enforcement really has a whole lot to go on at this time because law enforcement isn't relaying any information to the Gonsalves family. So basically, Steve Gonsalves is saying that there's not a lot of briefings happening during this time. And this is November 23rd. So this is only 10 days after these crimes occurred. And uh, basically, Steve Gonsalves says they probably don't know much about what's going on. And the family is expressing their frustrations about, you know, about the information that law enforcement is passing along to them. Now, this is where Kaylee's brother says, and he confirms this in this interview. And this is where Kaylee's brother says that both of the surviving roommates were on the ground floor. So he confirms that both of the surviving roommates were on the first level. And this is on November 23rd. So one of the things that was really frustrating Steve Gonsalves at this time and in this interview was that... At this point, he believed that they were expanding the crime scene, which was concerning to him and his family. And it should be, because at this time, 
when they start expanding the crime scene, it kind of gives the families the idea that they might not be getting everything they need from the crime scene that they're focusing on. And, uh, and he says, Steve Gonsalves says, they expanded the crime scene. There were volunteers walking around finding things. So what he's basically talking about is there were volunteers walking around this, pro around this property and that they were finding items that law enforcement did not find. So he also says uh, that it would be disheartening that a week later they didn't have the right crime scene. So that seems kind of strange because, you know, during this time, we believe we know that the crime scene is 1122 King Road. So when he says that they expanded the crime scene, how far did they expand the crime scene? Did they expand the crime scene as far out as Banfield? Did they expand... Uh, did they expand the crime scene out to the apartment buildings that surrounded the house? So how far out did they expand this crime scene? And was 1122 King Road not the only crime scene? So that's kind of confusing. That was kind of a confusing statement in that interview. Now, on December 4th of 2022... Now, this is three weeks after the Idaho 4 crimes occurred. Steve and Christy Gonzalez do an interview, another interview with Fox News, and they're standing outside of the Moscow Police Department. And in this interview, it's obvious that they've become very frustrated with this investigation. Very frustrated. Steve Gonsalves in particular is extremely frustrated with law, with law enforcement at this time. Now, Steve Gonsalves says, you know, he says, and this is, you know, this is a, this is, this is Fox News. So Steve Gonsalves says, it seems like they're trying to suppress the story. Now, during this interview, you know, Steve and Christy talk about how they're worried that this investigation could possibly go cold. And they're trying to keep this investigation going and they're trying to keep this inve investigation fresh because they just don't really feel like law enforcement is doing enough at this time. They're very frustrated with law enforcement at this time. And he also says, you know, they don't want reward posters posted because they don't want to cast a negative, because they don't, basically, they don't want to cast a negative light on the university or on, you know, the town, this small town of Moscow, Idaho. So as they're, as law enforcement is trying to solve this crime, they're also trying to maintain the image of the University of Idaho. And this town of Moscow, Idaho. So in this interview, it, it, it kind of appears that there's a struggle. Because Steve Gonsalves doesn't care about the University of Idaho or this town at this time. He's concerned about, you know, he wants to, he wants to catch whoever took his daughter's life. And you can't blame him for that. You know, a lot of people have said that Steve Gonsalves was acting crazy. But I don't believe that at all. I believe that Steve Gonsalves is a, is a loving father that basically, you know, he just, he just lost his daughter. And he is hell-bent on finding out who did this. I don't believe that Steve Gonsalves was acting crazy at all. I believe that he was acting like you know, a, a father who just lost a child and he, he wants to know who did it. And I don't, I don't, I don't blame him at all. I don't blame him at all. 
I believe that he's attempting to turn over every single stone and he's not, he doesn't care who he's offending or who, you know, he doesn't care who's getting upset about, you know, the information that he's sharing. And I would be doing the same thing. I'm, I'm, you know, I understand he's a father who just lost his child. He's not, he's not worried about the University of Idaho right now. And I understand that. So in this interview, he talks about, this is, in this interview is where Steve Gonsalves becomes very frustrated in this interview. And he says something that definitely catches my attention. Now, he basically says, stop playing games. These are people's lives. And this is the future of this community. There's going to be 10,000 to 15,000 kids that come into this community this year, or they don't. So Steve Gonsalves is basically, in, in my interpretation, Steve Gonsalves is basically saying at this time that he understands that the town is trying to handle this case very carefully. And that he also understands that, you know, this crime could definitely affect the town of Moscow, Idaho, and the University of Idaho, as well as their attendance at this college. Because, you know, parents and students are seeing this information. They've seen, you know, this crime and the reports of this crime. And this could definitely affect a student's decision to attend the University of Idaho, which Steve Gonsalves understands that the town of Moscow, Idaho, and the University of Idaho are doing everything in their power to, you know, prevent that from happening. Now, also in, the, in this interview, Steve Gonsalves says, I'll cut to the chase. Their means of death don't match. They don't. They don't match, Steve Gonsalves says. He doesn't have to go up the steps. He says, let's stop playing games, guys. I need somebody to step up and be an alpha. And, you know, be somebody to be a leader. Don't make me do it. I don't want to do it. He doesn't have to go up the steps. Their points of damage don't match. And I'm just going to say it. So basically, what Steve Gonsalves is saying is that the injuries to Maddie don't match the injuries to Kaylee. And Steve Gonsalves is saying that their injuries don't match at all. That Maddie's injuries are not consistent with Kaylee's at all. Now, as far as he doesn't have to go up the steps, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean that you know, that at this time they believe that all of this possibly was happening on the second level and that this suspect didn't really need to go to the upper level, that, that this was all happening on the second level. I've just, I've just always wondered why he would say he doesn't have to go up the steps. You know, it, to me, and this is just my opinion, but it makes me think that most of the action was happening on the second level and that that's what Steve Gonsalves was referring to. Now, I'm not saying that's what he was saying. I'm just saying, to me, that's what I took away from that statement. Now, he also goes on to say, if you don't want to say nothing, that's your bet. But don't, but don't say I'm leaking anything. I paid that bill. I sent my daughter to college to get an education and she came back in a box. So at this time, Steve Gonsalves 
is very frustrated because it seems to me that he doesn't believe that law enforcement is being straight with the public. You know, at this time, him and Christy are, they're talking about, you know, they don't believe that law enforcement is doing everything that they could possibly do. And it's confusing them as to, not just confusing them, but it's also frustrating them as to why law enforcement wants to keep everything so secret. They don't want to get the public involved in any way. And Steve Gonsalves believes that the community is the key to solving these crimes. Now, also on December 4th, Steve Gonsalves does another interview with Fox and Friends. And he says something in this interview that I never really picked up on until just a few days ago. Now, I took a whole day and I just sat down and watched all of the interviews that were conducted in the, in the following weeks of these crimes. So I watched all of the interviews that were conducted before they knew anything about Brian Koberger and before they knew anything, before they had a suspect in custody. And this is something that I hadn't really seen until a couple of days ago. And it, it's, in my opinion, it's very important. And... On December 4th on Fox and Friends, Steve Gonsalves says, I can kind of tell by my daughter's text messages that she did call 911. So he he says in this interview on December 4th that he can kind of tell by Kaylee's text messages that she called 911. So we do know that there were that there were calls to 911 in those early morning hours. So did did Kaylee call 911? I mean, Steve Gonsalves has seen these text messages and, and he says that, that Kaylee did call 911. That's something I've never really heard before. That's, that's something that nobody has ever really expanded upon in, you know, in the media as far as I'm aware of. But this was the first time that I heard this. So I feel like that's kind of important, you know, did Kaylee call 911? Because if she did call 911, it would be an indication that she heard or that she possibly heard something going on downstairs. I mean, is this an indication that maybe something was going on downstairs and that Kaylee called 911? Because he also says, after he says that she did call 911, he also says that she wasn't saying anything along the lines of like she had heard something or that she was in fear. You know, he he's saying that, you know, she's calling 911 for something going on in the house, but that she's not in fear for her own life. I don't know, but I I thought that was rather interesting that you know that that Steve Gonsalves believed on December 4th that Kaylee did call 911. That's kind of a big deal. Now, uh on December 14th, uh Steve Gonsalves does an interview with ABC News and he talks about the injuries And he's talking about Kaylee's injuries. And he says, they weren't stab wounds. They were like large punctures. Now, he talks about the injuries to Kaylee and Maddie obviously being different. But he also talks about Kaylee's injuries being like gouges that they weren't they weren't stab wounds 
So that, I mean, now, you know, these injuries are talked about as stab wounds. But when, when Steve Gonzalez was doing these interviews, you know, before there was a suspect in custody, he's saying they weren't, they weren't stab wounds. And he reiterates this in a few different interviews. In a few different interviews, Steve Gonzalez says that these were not stab wounds, that they were much more, you know, that they were more like punctures and that they were, they, they were like gouges, like flesh being torn. Now, also on December 15th, uh, in an interview with 4 News Now, Steve Gonzalez also says something that I hadn't heard before. And Steve Gonzalez says, imagine if you're a parent and you have pertinent information to this, like that dog. How could you eat that? How could you suppress that? So in this interview, Steve Gonzalez is basically saying that that these parents have information that could help the investigation, but that law enforcement really isn't asking them for any of this information. I just, I thought it was very weird that it said, uh, that he said that he had pertinent information and refers to that dog. So I've always wondered if, you know, I've always wondered if Murphy was actually in the house at the time that these crimes were happening. Because there are reports of people around this area that claim that they heard people calling for Murphy. They heard people calling for Murphy in these early morning hours. So I've always wondered if Murphy was in the house was in the house when these crimes were being committed? Or did somebody put Murphy in Kaylee's room after the fact? So Steve Gonzalez is basically saying in this interview on the 15th that he has pertinent information about the dog. And that's the first time I had heard that. So You know, but I have always wondered about what about Murphy? Was Murphy in the house? Was he put back into Kaylee's room? Where was Murphy during during the time that these crimes were were being committed? Now, these are just a few interviews that I went through. I went through a lot of interviews, and these are just a few of the interviews because I wanted to go through the interviews that were happening immediately after these crimes occurred. And, you know, see if I could pick up on any information that maybe got lost over this past year. And there were a few things in these interviews that I found that I had no idea about. I I had no idea that Steve Gonzalez had talked about Kaylee calling 911. And I also didn't have, I also didn't know anything about, you know, Steve Gonzalez wanting to talk about Kaylee's dog to law enforcement. So there was a lot of information in in, in these interviews and and a lot of really good information in these interviews. And, um, you know, in my opinion, you know, the Gonsalves family, you know, they they lost a child and they, they want someone held accountable. And I don't think that any of us can blame them for that. You know, Steve Gonsalves has been rather vocal about, you know, in his interviews, whereas, you know, the other families really have not. Um, but you know, I feel like these interviews are important because, you know, this was before all the gag order stuff. And, you know, I mean, law enforcement, I have a feeling has been trying to get Steve Gonsalves to, to not say anything, but Steve Gonsalves is a dad who lost a child and he wants to, he wants as much information as he can find and I don't blame him at all. So I wanted to talk about these interviews and and kind of talk about, you know, what was going on. I'm still I'm really I'm really digging deep into the very first weeks of these crimes because I believe that that is where all of the information lies. <laughs>
So I'm going to continue to look into, you know, this information, you know, the information that was coming in before they had a suspect. You know, I think it's, it's valuable information. Please stay tuned for my next video and please like and, and subscribe to my channel if you like my content. Uh, I truly appreciate it and we'll see you next time.